Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwenza Garden in Ireland and I've been plant shopping again. So in this video today, I'm going to talk you through the seven new perennials I've bought and show you where I'm going to plant them in my garden. Now it's actually raining at the moment, but if it clears up, then I'll record planting them in the garden. Not because I'm afraid of the rain, but because if it's raining, I can't bring the camera out. We hardy gardeners, of course, muscle on through with the weather and are out there gardening in the rain. I'm also going to give you just a quick update on some of the seedlings and things I have going here in this greenhouse. So let's get on with the video. So hello and you are very welcome to the video and this is my second take at recording this because oh my goodness the rain just started bucketing down a moment ago and was drumming on the roof of the greenhouse making it absolutely impossible to be heard. Anyway it seems to have stopped now so we're going to get on with the video and the first thing I want to let you know is that if you're new here I garden in what roughly equates to as zone 9 that's US hardiness zone 9. Now we don't use that system here in Ireland but you can take it as a rough guide. So all of the plants that I'm going to be talking about here today do well for me outdoors in zone 9 and I have a wonderful haul of seven gorgeous perennials that are going to brighten up my borders and when you start out in spring I don't know do you find this that there's always you know um, a plant that's become a bit infested with weeds and as you try to clear it you realize that you're not going to be able to do it you have to take the whole thing out and there you go a gap and also <laughs> in my case I sowed and grew a lot of annuals last year this year I wasn't able to because I was in hospital in March so there is a gap that would have been populated with those plants and it is just the perfect opportunity to take yourself down to your local garden center and pick up some beauties that are going to fill in those gaps and the first beauty I want to talk about today is an astrantia and this is the astrantia called ruby wedding now you recall I do have a bit of a passion for astrantias and there aren't a whole lot out there there are ones in reds there's ones in pinks and there are ones in whites but I just think it's such a wonderful wonderful plant and ruby wedding is one of the finest red dark red astrantias it's looking pretty good so far and these are ones that it's a plant that flowers in summer and once it finishes flowering what you then need to do is to cut it back leaves and all too just kind of like maybe an inch off the ground and that does two things it makes the plant regenerate and produce fresh new growth which is wonderful but it also stops it seeding about because some of these can be you know they can be a bit weedy in terms of producing lots and lots of seedlings of course if that's what you want that's grand some people you know if you're starting out you might want plants that are going to seed about anyway there you go ruby wedding really pleased with this and this is hardy from hardiness zones five to nine i believe so a great one to have now oh yeah next up so this is a gypsophila and it's an alpine plant that is matte forming and if we look close at it you can see that it has a mass of tiny tiny white flowers with delicate pink stripes an absolute beauty and I do love a plant that when it's in flower it goes at it wholeheartedly and just pumps out those blooms I so much prefer that to something that maybe gives one or two flowers regularly throughout the summer okay so a semi evergreen alpine as I said it needs uh, well-drained soil it needs full sun and I plan on planting this at the front of a border because I just think that is so gorgeous you know and my soil generally tends to be well well drained so it won't be a problem and then next year even this year look at that I could certainly divide that and get lots and lots of plants it's just kind of begging for it already so I would say that's a really really good doer 
so next up in my haul we have a plant that really just caught my eye in the garden center and said take me take me and this is asphodeline uh, lutea lutea because it's yellow and when i saw it in the garden center i was completely taken by the fact that it was near to this GM and I just thought the combination of the two colors was just magical. Now this is something that requires a well-drained position and full sun. It's got the glaucous foliage and as we know glaucous foliage generally is an indication of a Mediterranean type sun loving, uh, well-drained loving kind of plant. So this is one that flowers according to information I can find from June to July, which is funny because it's May now and it's already in flower. So perhaps it was forced, but yeah. So I, the, like my friend has this plant and I should have logically asked her about it, asked if it was a bit weedy, if it, you know, it's a bit of a pest in the garden at all, but you know how it goes. You're in a garden center, you see something, you like the combination and you just want it and you just spontaneously buy it and live with the consequences afterwards. But yeah, I mean, I will let you know if it turns out to be weedy. But the plant I bought to go with it is this gorgeous, gorgeous GM. And the GM, now I just have a complete weakness for GMs. I can't stop buying them. I. <laughs> I think May, June is the time when these plants, they really, really shine. And whenever you see them, they just, I mean, that is just perfection for me. That kind of semi double flower, the doubles are gorgeous as well. And the color range, I mean, they, they're, the oranges and the reds, they just sing to my heart. There are yellows as well, and even whitey ones. But this one was just so fantastic with the, um, the yellow, um, plant there that I couldn't resist putting another GM in my trolley and this one is called Coral Tempest so it's part of the Tempest group and the thing that I absolutely love about GMs besides the physical appearance of them is that they flower so for so so very long now there is a video I made about it somewhere which I link to up above I usually start out every year with really good intentions of making sure I get the absolute most out of my GMs but I go don't know I mean come the end of July I'm exhausted from deadheading them and I usually just let them go but you can have them flowering for a longer time if you assiduously deadhead yeah it being kind of GM season, I picked up this little gem here, which is called Tutti Fruity. And this one, look at it, look at the flowers. Aren't they just gorgeous? The yellow and the orange is just fantastic. And this is a much shorter plant than the other one. So really for the front of a border. The other one you can dot in among things and it just does a fantastic job of complementing anything that it is near. So what else did I get? I also bought myself a Cypripedium. I don't know which variety this is. It's some kind of hybrid. I should imagine there's no, there's no name on it. And depending on which one it is, these are hardy from zones like three to nine. They have a quite a, a wide range. They are fussy plants and you do have to get the setup completely right. But I have a hardy orchid bed and this is going to be among the slipper orchids that populate that bed and big, big flowers, which is just fantastic. So with the cypripediums you need to have really perfect drainage so you need to set up a bed purposefully for it excavate the earth and backfill and there is a video I made about that which I'll link to up above on what you need to do what you also need to do is to feed the plant well and that involves giving a slow release fertilizer in February say 
and then you should have gorgeous gorgeous blooms like this the last thing I want to show you is a salvia and this isn't actually in flower and I always love to you know go shopping and buy things when they're in flower because you can see what goes with what and you can know roughly when they're going to flower in your garden having said that we do have this yellow king here <laughs> that is in flower before it's supposed to be in flower but anyway generally speaking you can know when they're going to flower and therefore make sensible decisions about what you need where but this is a salvia so it won't flower until july but it's the one called royal bumble so it's a bush salvia and the bush salvias are great and these are ones that i'm leaning towards because they're hardy so salvias this kind of salvia will tend to be hardy from zone seven to nine but depending on yeah i guess how bad a winter you might have i've had good luck with these before the hot lips one that i bought a while ago has done well in the garden so i am going to try royal bumble which has gorgeous gorgeous red flowers and purple calyxes which are how do you say kind of little glove that the flower sits in and just the kind of purple color against the red makes a very attractive plant so i know exactly where that's going and i absolutely can't wait to get it in the ground but while we're here i just want to show you I guess a couple of things in the greenhouse that are going on and on my last video you'll recall I needed to repot the tomato plants well the tomato plants are just here in front of me and they have now been repotted they're actually in flower my lilies from last year as well are doing so well really really tall with flower buds on them most of them anyway and the dahlias are just shooting up I also have seedlings doing well so the blue Himalayan poppy that you saw me so my goodness was this in February the seedlings are doing well but still small and I have plenty of annuals despite my late start which are just getting their second set of leaves now and of course there are the bare root plants i bought and unboxed with you just recently doing really quite well well most of them anyway okay so that's the job done and in case you're wondering this geom here the tutti frutti i've left a bit of a gap between it and the stupid gigantia beside it because that does come out a bit and will would overshadow it um, also behind me, just here, you can't really see, the Selenum willichianum that I mentioned replanting in my last garden tour video. And I hear a wonderful bumblebee in there. I don't know what was yet the GM, but it's good news anyway, isn't it? The more bumblebees we can attract, the better. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four of the plants planted. I am not quite sure where I'm going to put the salvia, but I'll enjoy finding out. What I'm off to do now is to plant the cypripedium. I won't put it on camera because, well, you'll just have to look forward to seeing it in my May garden tour. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Oh my goodness. Just listen to that rain. It's incredible. Is there a stick in front of me? Yeah, this is my Albizia tree. I'm telling you, it isn't going well today. <laughs> I think I need to move that tree around.